Welcome to the After Dark Podcast with Anthony James and Conrad. This is an extra episode for your YouTube comments because Anthony James and Conrad could not stop rambling on. What a pair of schmucks. Hello and welcome to the After Dark Podcast. I'm Anthony James and that's Conrad. Hello. Oh, he's gone back to the somber tones. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it. I'm- I'm mixing it up. I'm mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. Keep the listeners guessing. That's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this week we have a lot of questions for Conrad. This scene or this episode, I should say, has really sparked the uh, the the creative juices or the the uh, question making juices of our audience. So we've got a lot for you, Conrad. Um, anything you want to say in the meantime? Um, I just thought I have I haven't read any of them, but I did uh, briefly look at the comments for the the previous episode on YouTube and cripes, there's a lot of them. So I'm looking forward to it, but I'm intimidated by by the enthusiasm. So I hope I don't let anyone down. Oh, you won't. Don't worry about that. Um, we'll just say, can you make sure you subscribe onto uh, on the uh, YouTube channel? Make sure you subscribe on the audio apps if you haven't already. Uh, new episode every Monday and new episode every Friday. Usually the Friday episode is a listener Q&A. Sometimes it will be a film. Sometimes it will be a different uh, TV show. Who knows? We, we, we are going to keep that open, especially coming into the end of the season. You know we have to take a break, a one-week break, because we're trying to give Conrad the best experience possible to separate these seasons out. So we've got some Let thoughts about that. Let me in it. Yeah, let him luxuriate. Let him let him sort of take take a breath before starting season three, and we're going to be uh, we've got a few ideas for what to do there. Um, apart from that, uh, oh yes, I wanted to mention uh, if you have any questions for Conrad about episode seven of season two, get them on the episode nineteen video. Uh, I suppose no, that would be the episode twenty video. Yeah. Oh well, um, we have a we have a new means. Yes, of, of course, of doing it as well. Yeah, so if you want to, uh, we've also been thinking, as our numbers are going up on the audio apps, those people, we don't really want you to have to truck all the way over to YouTube to leave a question if you want to. So the people who are on audio apps, if you want to leave, uh, ask a question to Conrad or myself, you can actually send it at any point, at any time, to the email address. This is, And this also goes for the YouTube uh, listeners if you want to do that too, if you don't want to leave a comment. So if you send an email to ad pod mail so ad for after dark ad pod mail at gmail.com that will take you to the uh the that, that will send it to us i'll also put that in the description of this video uh for anyone who uh, and also the description of the uh, podcast on the podcasting sites anything else conrad no i just i look forward to getting loads of really lovely and polite emails in that inbox <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, get, yeah. we're gonna get signed up for uh penis enlargement pills almost immediately yeah, what, oh, 100%. I'd expect nothing less. Yeah, I expect nothing less. Uh, just, can you also please not send us pictures of penises that are <laughs> s- slightly curved to the right? Thank you very much. We uh, we need to know what the, what it looks like. Benny's only described how it feels in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Klausen says. If if you look at it, if like everyone looks at an elephant from a different <laughs> from a yeah. different angle. <laughs> Exactly. We need to see Peter Doppel's penis from every angle, is what we're <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, show me the whole elephant. Right, let's get into the question. Yeah, let's do it. A stranger from the outside. Question one comes from MH. Claudius. Now we're getting to the point in the season. Now I haven't even read MH, so you know I'm not, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, saying anything about MH here. But we're getting to the point in the season now where. I am worried that someone's just going to say something which leads you down a, a path very directly. Uh, having said that... What, correctly know, or incorrectly? Correctly, I'm worried about. Oh, okay, well, I'm not worried about that. Give me all the points. Like, <laughs> if people want to get me charity points, like I'm all for it. Right, okay. So let's go into MH's question now, which I have never okay. read before, but I've just yeah. glanced over and realized that I shouldn't have said what it has said before this question because it seems like I'm focusing on this when I'm not. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> MH and me are on the same page. I thought that's, you know, we, we understand each other. Okay, so MH says, Claudia says something like, I've seen a world without you and it's not what you expect. How, what, like, what could that possibly be? Or how could that possibly be, sorry? It's, it's got to be an alternate timeline. I just, I feel like, there has to be a way to so the 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 more people talk about cycles, the more it seems like these individuals are seeing multiple cycles of the same events taking place. Um, so I guess one of these sets of cycles has 
Jonas has managed to kill himself or, or, or stop himself from existing, I guess, uh, by stopping Michael from killing himself. Um, mm. But I, I feel like there's got to be some kind of alternate timeline that she has seen in one of these cycles that has led her to say that. Okay, cool. Uh, next question comes from DJKL Production. For Conrad, why do you think Michael did try to hide... Uh, from Mikkel, his younger self. Why did he try and hide from him? Um, I don't know if he was hiding. I mean, well, he was, but I think it's more just being confronted with something that you've bottled up. Really, it's kind of like um, like when you when you send someone at work a really shitty email. And then, and then you see the response pop up in your inbox, and you're kind of like, "Oh, I know it's there, but I'm just gonna pretend it's not and hide away from it for a little while." And I think that's what he was doing with Mickle. He he like kind of just wanted to shield himself from from that potential com- like well not conflict, but that potential c- confrontation with with the reality of his past, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, how do you think it's possible that Jonas? Uh brought Mikkel back to the cave, especially because neither his original virgin self... Uh, <laughs> I love that <laughs> distinction. Virgin nor, Jonas yeah, of a Chad scarred Jonas. <laughs> yeah, nor his scarred self yet. Uh, cannot remember having done that. So how is that possible? Oh, well, I mean, we see his scar. We see him pulling his um, his coat up over his scar in the cutaway uh, to him guiding Mikkel through the... Um, through the cave so it's just uh, I, my interpretation is it's just something he hasn't done yet um but presumably will do pretty probably pretty soon if uh, if i were well we all were, yeah well, we all know, I guess when we know exactly when it's gonna happen yeah <laughs> yeah we all know when it happens like you know so there's no real questions around that but um what feelings did you have while watching Jonas going back to the happenings of the first episode um mainly just, can it just be a list please <laughs> a list, yeah. list of feelings first i was confused um <laughs> <laughs> no it was i mean well, i was a little bit confused at first it wasn't what i was expecting but i i think it's it's predominantly a sense of kind of bittersweet nostalgia um that that leads into attention and and, and an outright sadness as it becomes clear um what they're going to have to force or not force but encourage uh michael to do um yeah it's it's a very sad episode uh and i think the sadness is amplified by how kind of warm and fuzzy the first half feels Mm -hmm. okay cool uh thanks uh dj kl productions uh next up jamie jet says how many times did conrad climax during this episode Um, a, a a gentleman never asks and a lady never tells. Oh, I can't actually remember which way round that's supposed to be, but it was a good episode. I did enjoy it. I certainly didn't climax during the Jonas and Martha scene. I'll tell you that much for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and also he didn't climax as much as as much as Magnus did in that lake. That's what I'll tell you. Oh my god. Yeah. That's uh, that's why he lingered in the lake because he didn't he, like he had a, an absolute raging erection that he <laughs> needed, to, needed to let go down. Um. Yeah. Ma- Magnus and Francisca. That's that's a problematic relationship. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jamie Jett says serious question. This episode that was pretty serious. Come on, we we, we all we all respected that's that complete, question. That's completely serious. Yeah, this episode deals with more deterministic approach to time travel. If this is the case, does Conrad see the loop ever being broken? I I mean, I feel like the loop has has changed at least a couple of times based on based on what Claudia tells Jonas. Um, so I mean, in the back of my head, I'm always reminded of the fact that that both Adam, who I guess isn't trustworthy in himself, um, but also the stranger, have implied that Cat- um, have pl- implied that Claudia rather. Have, I'm back on calling people random names um, that just aren't theirs. Why? What did you um, call her? Sorry, I, I I almost called Claudia Katerina, and I'm trying to remember <laughs> what I call. I, I had a different name for was it Charlotte, but I called something random. Catherine. In the first I think it was Catherine, wasn't it? Yeah. Who is Catherine? We're yet to meet her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, 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 I'm I, put in mind of the fact that the stranger thinks that, that Claudia has lied to him. So I guess it's possible that this is a lie, but I feel like there are things that are changing. Hmm. Because if it was, well, I mean, if not uh, only because if it was purely deterministic, then there wouldn't be much point in fighting to try and change it or fighting to try and maintain it because it would just happen. 
um so yeah i think i think there must have been some changes and I'm, I'm interested to see what they what they are okay awesome uh next one from chris k so by the end of episode six we realized that adam sent Jonas back only to lead michael to his death and not to save him cloudy appears uh and after all take after all that takes Jonas with her saying that michael's death cannot be prevented and that and it is that he has to sacrifice himself the end result is that Adam led his younger self to Claudia's path and therefore her influence. What does Comrade think about this? Um, well, actually, so that's interesting, the first part of that, because that wasn't initially my read of that. Um, I, my, my interpretation of it was that Adam did want um, Jonas to stop Michael from killing himself, and it was Claudia's interference which which confirmed that he does actually need to need to let michael or, or kind of coerce michael into killing himself so oh, maybe okay. i've just misread that um but um but I but th- if michael killed himself last time then like in in yeah. adam's in adam's timeline even though they're the same thing if in adam's timeline if michael killed himself in his timeline too then surely it, it happened exist. because claudia did the same thing you know yeah yeah that is true um but i i don't think I, I I don't think Adam really respects Claudia as a threat, so I don't think he thinks that her influence. I, I don't think he's worried about her having influence over his younger self, um, and and that's that's why he's he's happy to allow Jonas to kind of fall into her thrall. But I, I guess maybe because he can see the 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 kind of transition from where the stranger is to where he is. Uh, currently already already starting to happen so he's confident that that things are going to be maintained as 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 he wishes them to be yeah yeah exactly like he ended up the way he was even though that might have happened to him as well so yeah. therefore he's not worried about it um is it true that uh claudia and adam are enemies by this point oh yeah i think so i think we've i think we've got kind of you know that they're di- they feel so diametrically opposed even though they're kind of saying similar things um yeah i I feel like i feel like they must be enemies okay do they uh do they want different things or do they want the same thing oh that feels like a that feels like a question with a potentially a potentially huge amount of discussion that could go on after it because you know the whole like monologue of the adam mm-hmm. monologue at the beginning of this feel like beginnings and ends are they just the same thing um I I it, I don't know what the end of this show is going to look like. I think it's going to hinge on maybe one or two big decisions, which won't come until until the very end of the show. And I think Adam and and Claudia's plans will probably look quite similar to each other right up until the moment that they don't. Um, but I think ultimately their end goals are: Claudia wants to preserve life, regardless of the pain that it causes to certain people in it, and Adam for whatever reason presumably because of the pain he's experienced wants to end it okay interesting and last question from chris k are you are we sure that adam is manipulating Jonas, or is it claudia who's manipulating him through adam i mean i think claudia is manipulating everyone like i think claudia is the only one who actually seems to have really figured it out as far as i'm concerned you know i i, I was fooled once by thinking that noah had it all figured out and then as the sort of camera pulled back it became clear that he didn't actually know anywhere near as much as 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 he kind of presented himself to Mm -hmm. i think the same is true of adam i think adam knows more than noah but i i'm i'm on team claudia i trust claudia implicitly okay awesome uh next uh, episode next question from vic disco uh great show as always guys thanks vic uh got a quick question for conrad when Eunice talked to Marta at the lake and he told her we're a perfect match for the first time, did your mind suddenly race back to season one and realize that uh, she was kind of a stalker? She couldn't figure out why this guy would say something like that at the lake only to reject her on later on. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I think this is just Yona saying to hell with it when he says that. I, I don't think... I, I think he has like so he at the point that he says we're not a good match he doesn't know that his past self or guess future self at that point uh told marta that they were a perfect match so this this conversation actually happens in reverse 
so he says, oh yeah, we're not a good match, which is just a dumb kind of platitude that he offers up because he doesn't <laughs> want to talk about the truth. But when he says we're a perfect match, I think he's telling the truth. Like I think regardless of all the biological reasons why they shouldn't have a relationship, there is still an undeniable chemistry between them and they do love each other. And I think when he realizes that he can't stop himself from meet oh, for having that kind of sunny afternoon with Marta that begins their their romantic affair of that summer, he just says to hell with it and says, I'm I'm gonna tell you how I feel. Um and from that come a huge host of problems. Um but I I, I, I think, you know, they at least Jonas Jonas is entering into this relationship consciously, although perhaps not for the healthiest of reasons, whereas I feel a bit sorry for Marta. <laughs> Because she just doesn't have any clue what's going on at the moment. Yeah, and I will say something I've uh, realized while actually just listening to this, uh, your answer there, is that this is really interesting, right? So buckle in for this, Conrad. Okay. Marta, when whenever Jonas said in season one, we're not a good match, that really struck Marta to the core, right? Now, obviously yeah, she's yeah. been rejected by Jonas, so that would strike her to the core anyway. But it was even heavier than that, based on the fact that Jonas had told her previously that they were a perfect match. Now, yeah. what's really yeah. interesting about that is, is that the Jonas who has come round to thinking, like this is Jonas post, like in the future, after he said we're not a good match. He's now mm. saying we're a perfect match. So the Jonas who wants her to believe they're a perfect match is actually ensuring by saying that, that she's going to be heavily affected in a negative way whenever his younger self says we're not a good match. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I think there's always that push and pull in their relationship. Like Jonas knows that they shouldn't be together because of because they're related, um, and he knows that he should be disgusted with himself for it. And I think there's a there's a significant or amount of self hatred that is is in his in uh, Lewis Hoffman's performance of his character when it comes to this relationship. But there is an undeniable chemistry there that he can't really let go of. Mm-hmm. Uh, to quote Brokeback Mountain, he can't quit her um yeah, yeah. so yeah and like as, as as bad as it is he, he he you know he likes the poison and for the one person who's as big of a nerd as me that quote from brokeback mountain that actually makes up one of my favorite lost bloopers let's move on so uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh alex asks uh does Conrad expect the story of the drowned Lady of the Lake to be important? If yes, who might it be referring to? Uh, I feel like that's I will a good just, question. I will just state, I was absolutely mind blown when you didn't start to theorize yourself about this in the episode. Well, I I feel like I didn't really think about it, to be honest. I, I figured it was just like one of those dumb kind of urban legends. But actually, that's but a, that's but- a re- but even if it is though, I still would have thought you wanted you would want to go down that avenue. Yeah, that's that is a good point. I hadn't I hadn't really considered it, but yeah, I I think I would love for that to be you know one of those kind of local town ghost stories that actually turns out to have some truth in it because some someone in the twenties is going to did did they say which date she was no. supposed to have died? No, I, I don't. I think they'd have said ages ago, which for teenagers could be ten years, you know. Yeah, I that that would be really cool. I would love that. I don't know who it could possibly be, but I would absolutely love it if that comes back as a as a sort of um a way to work in one of those kind of small town ghost stories. Okay. If I give you a free pass that this doesn't have to go in the the the, the theory matrix, name one character who you think it could be. Um okay. I feel like it's going to have to be someone from the 20s, because that's a spookier time than the 50s. Um, I'm going to say... Ooh, actually, no. Mm, 50s, maybe? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Agnes from the 50s. Okay, cool. That's my call. Awesome. Uh, right, and that, that's not a theory matrix uh, theory, because it is so, like, you know stab in the dark so i mean t- i mean to be fair i have got on the theory matrix after the main episode that martha's baby will go back into the t- time and become one of katarina's parents based on literally nothing so. <laughs> but i just don't want to lead you into another incorrect theory you know what i mean it's so a, the score's say, okay. not looking great either way okay if it turns out that agnes is this lady <laughs> yeah. in the lake you can have the point but don't I can put- retroactively claim it yeah don't put it on the theory matrix until then all right because i don't, I don't okay. want to ca- cause you to lose points uh it- if 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 I'm just leading you down a blind alley, like, okay, so where was, um, this, where was this charitable attitude when you told me to put Egon's dying in the sixth episode last week? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to make up for. 
Because <laughs> because uh, I I need to I need to get some uh, moral points back because I'm I'm definitely going to try and do that to you again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Marvin uh, asks. Did you notice Michael's last words to Jonas about how God doesn't make errors is repeated? Uh, like, God doesn't err, I think it is, um, mm. is repeated in Noah's words to Mikkel a few episodes ago. And do you think Noah was educating him for this, for uh, him like, uh, for, for a reason? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up actually, like, because I, it stood out to me, um, because Mikkel doesn't seem, obviously, he's quite young. But yeah. he doesn't seem like a particularly religious character. Um, and I wonder if that's an implication that he is, at some point between the 80s and the present day, finds religion, maybe even through through Noah. Although I, I think there's probably better avenues to find God than through, than through <laughs> Noah, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I, I think the, um, the, the implication there to me is that he had to try and find some way to deal with the reality of his circumstances and maybe religion was how he found a way of dealing with it. I mean, we know Enos is religious as well. Um, mm-hmm. So may- maybe she rubbed off on him. Yeah, exactly. Like she, she was raised by, uh, he was raised by her eventually anyway. So um, also with well, Mag- in a manner of speaking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. When drugged. he was awake. Yeah, drugged. Yeah. And just let, let sleep. Also with Magnus being name dropped at the end, does it, that give you any ideas about uh, how the group came to be? And uh, who else could be members? So obviously you said Francisca, and I confirm that, to be honest with you. Yeah, so Francisca and Magnus, I'm pretty sure Bartos is in it, just because I, I'm sticking with that guy who gets killed with a pickaxe is Bartos, because they look so alike. Um, and Bartos being in it kind of messes up my everyone's a Nielsen theory, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, see more Nielsens in it. Obviously, I, I, I've said I think Katarina's parents are going to be in the Sigmundus crew or maybe even her grandparents I definitely think there's some Sigmundus stuff in her past uh, mainly because of the song that plays in the party and also because we haven't seen a single thing about her parents yet uh, which seems suspicious um, mm. but yeah so it's um, I, I, I think the Nielsens are going to have to play a very significant part in the Sigmundus cult and I don't really understand why yet um, but I, I think as as we revealed more members of them, I wouldn't be surprised to see more of them being people who will ultimately end up as part of the Nielsen family. Uh yep, yeah, awesome. Uh Marvin has done a great bit of analysis here on the uh the clothes of Jonas. Okay, hit me with it. I'm not gonna give it to you. So like he, they're from River Island. <laughs> like, I, I just because he goes into the clothes of season three. Uh oh, okay. now now, <laughs> Marvin. Again, it's always Marvin. It's always, <laughs> it's always Listen, Marvin. Marvin's trying to help me out. Marvin's trying to help me out. And yeah, but it's, always, it. it's always Marvin who I'm avoiding reading things of. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's always Marvin. I have to say, listen, Marvin, I do trust you. You know what, Marvin? It's getting to the point <laughs> where maybe 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 I maybe I have to really really start uh, looking over these comments a bit more a bit more. Having said that, it doesn't actually seem like there's anything spoilery in it whatsoever. But just in case. Because uh, I don't really have time right now to pause the podcast and read through it in, in, in entirety. <laughs> I see the word season three. Uh, sorry, Marvin. Right. Okay. Next question. Uh, <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it after the podcast, Marvin, and then I might I might include it in next uh, week. Is that all right? Or maybe I'll do it in a dark discussions episode on the costume. That'll be even better, actually. Remind me about that. Uh, so, Sea Bad Moon says question for both. How great it is is it that Jonas's slightly older self uh, self unwittingly becomes his ultimate wingman? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I did think of that. I did think of that. Yeah. I, I, is it like? Yeah, I suppose it is kind of being a wingman in a way. It's not not ideally how one would traditionally be a wingman by sort of kissing and flirting with the girl that you like while dressed as you. And then, and then like kind of and then kind of letting the letting you swoop in to to claim the victory so to speak but, yeah like uh, if, yeah, imagine if you get, went to a pub or something with with a wingman and uh you looked over and the wingman was kissing the woman yeah but they were wearing a wig that made them look like you <laughs> yeah. and, the, the, and then and then they and then they left and they're like look, it's been dark while we've been kissing you can you can slide in there now <laughs> oh sorry that's a horrible turn of phrase for what, what we're talking about. that was not i did not come out as i anticipated it to um yeah i mean it, i i actually think older Jonas uh was trying to uh sabotage the relationship um initially 
um but but then screwed that up by being too late to stop the meeting happening so it was just like ah oh, whatever um where and the irony being that if he had just done nothing the relationship probably wouldn't have happened as it did yeah yeah because he he has lived to this moment thinking that uh talking about grannies and the internet is what got him in <laughs> oh yeah that's uh, like uh, i've got to stop the granny and internet talk if i don't stop it it's all gonna happen again yeah the, uh, like the, the fact that he has replayed this moment countless times in his mind and he still thinks that that's what did it for marta <laughs> is as arrogant as i can possibly imagine <laughs> all right uh uh seabad goes on to say also how does the, his this aunt nephew relationship rank next to other shows unnamed in case of spoilers but i'm sure you know which one aunt nephew relationship Aunt nephew relate what is in specifically aunt nephew relationships are just incest. It's, it's in Game of Game of Thrones he's talking about. Oh right, okay, yeah. Like so In um, terms of a, a particular blondie uh, woman and a particular smouldering man. Are we talking about the Lannisters? I don't know. Like, no, figure- they're they're twins. I'm talking oh, about Oh yeah, okay. And yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Um Yeah, that is this is a lot more believable. I believe these two yeah. like each other. Whereas like that that relationship is so undercooked in Game of Thrones that so it's just like we like each other now, and then there's like two episodes, and then it's like we don't like each other anymore. And yeah. like in in this, it's it's much much like better realized. Yeah, and if you haven't listened to After Dark podcast episode twelve, where we do the uh, character arc of one of those characters. <laughs> It's hard not to give it away at this point, but yeah. uh, one of those characters you're talking about, we did a character arc of that character, and we talk about that at length, so check that out. Um, yeah. And then the next one, now, Seabad, I don't know what you've got against me, right? But <laughs> people always say, question for Conrad, or question just for Conrad. Like, nice. they always sort of, and, and it always implies, like, we don't want to hear what Anthony says, right? Now, this time, seabad has gone one step further. He says... Excellent. For Conrad specifically, <laughs> <laughs> keep your grubby mitts off of it. All right, this one's for me. I've got this. I'll right. handle this one. How does he think that Enos came in possession of the suicide letter? It seems odd that she would find it before Hannah or Jonas, especially considering that she uh, didn't seem in best terms with Hannah and probably didn't come to the house uh, that often. Also, we see at the end that Jonas and Claudia appear... Okay, answer the first part first about the suicide letter and Enos. Mm, well, they we were... know that Hannah didn't know, right? Sorry, it was you, for you specifically, sorry. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk, right? <laughs> Shut up! Um, we know that Hannah didn't know that Michael was Mikkel until the stranger comes back, so she can't have ever seen the suicide letter. So someone has got to take it from that house before before she sees it. Um, mm. If I if I was going to guess, I'd say it's probably going to be Jonas um, or maybe Claudia. Those guys seem like the ones who are sort of proactively trying to trying to go through these steps. But yeah, she she must never have seen it. So someone must have taken it and given it to her. And, and my guess is going to be one of those two. I will just say this. I know I'm not meant to be speaking because it is for Conrad specifically. It's but unbelievable. You, but, made, you got specific instructions. But I will just specifically say, uh, <laughs> it does kind of go along with my little theory from the last one, where I said maybe uh, Edith got everything from Michael's will. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she she got like a like a sort of Scrooge McDuck situation where she just got <laughs> everything, and there's just like a big vault full of money that Michael's been saving, and um and well, he, yeah, well, he knew what stocks that. he knew what stocks to invest in. He did, yeah. Yeah, he invested heavily in Apple. Um, Cop and ball magic sets. That's what he uh, invested in. <laughs> yeah. He got really into Pogs. Yeah. Um, that's that's a dated reference. There's going to be about five people in the comments who understand that. Oh my god, um, actually, you just reminded me. I was playing a, g- a game called Jackbox with my friends last week. And yeah. uh, and there's a game where like you know you get a word and you have to uh, give them clues. But you know, sort of it has to be predetermined clues from the computer program. Yeah. And the word I had to get them to guess was pog. <laughs> oh, that's so hard. There was there's no t- chance. No, there's no way cuz like it's such a it's such a very a thin sort of period of time where that was relevant yeah. that you really need to just reference it directly. Yeah. Um but yeah, so it, yeah, there you go. Enos uh inherits everything um and gets the suicide note through those means. Yeah, this will point out as well specifically. Um the uh the idea there that Hannah and her weren't on good terms 
when Michael actually killed himself, the picture was still intact, so we don't actually know what happened there yet. Um, yeah, I think there'll be the falling out will happen after his death. I mean, well, I mean, it kind of has to because he's, de- he's dying tomorrow uh, in the chronology <laughs> of, the, yeah. of the show. Okay, so also we see at the end that Jonas and Claudia appear to be leaving the, for the caves, presumably to travel. Oh, before he writes the letter, so uh, that seems to eliminate one of them delivering it to. Her. Okay, okay. Well, we sort of talked about that. It's about the will. It's about uh, Enos getting everything in the will. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Milos Vitten says, Satnam guys, question for Conrad, on which he already vaguely answered on Claudia, but after contemplating a bit what he thinks Adam's counterpart, he uh, may be uh, God, uh, time, uh, some character which we know, or some new character. I, I, I feel like, I feel like it's, it's more, I, I guess literally he's probably talking about um the the stranger but i i felt like there was an odd translation going on in that bit i feel like it's supposed to be more of a general kind of conversation like he's sort of saying he knows what will happen in the future but he doesn't know what every single person will do unless he he like kind of witnesses uh the actions himself um mm. that's that's kind of how on reflection i've come to interpret that but I, i'll be really interested to see if there is uh, a, another counterpart introduced I, I i kind of i forget that there's another season of this because we haven't really i guess no that's not true actually i was going to say we haven't had many new characters introduced but there's been plenty of kind of older versions or younger versions of characters introduced in the 50s and 20s yeah. that we haven't really seen much of um but um yeah i i, I feel like may I, I wonder how what new characters we'll get in season three I'm fascinated to see that. I, I, maybe the Sigmundus crew will get fleshed out, and maybe there will be other people operating you know, um, outside of their influence alongside Claudia. Okay, cool. Um, right, okay. Then there was a little bit for me here saying, if you recall your first watching, what was your thoughts on the same? So in terms of the counterpart thing, um, go and watch my first ever video I put on YouTube. That was my thoughts at the time. Okay. Nice plug. Excellent plug. At the end at the end of this uh series, Conrad and I are going to be reacting to my theory videos for season three. So and we and we're gonna see what he thinks of the theories that I cooked up at the time. Um so stay tuned for that as well. But um yeah, if you want to go watch that first ever video, it's called uh Dark Theory. <laughs> You've done yourself now. I know, I don't really want to give it away, but dark it's like dark theory basically looking into the religious themes of the show. That's all I'll say. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. We're only two episodes away, Conrad, from you actually watching them with me anyway, so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, then they, uh, just to add at the end here, Miloslav, uh, Milos Vitten says, uh, also, what Conrad, what does Conrad think uh, whether jo- Jonas will manage to succeed in his mission? I think, at this point, what I imagine what you mean by that, because we know that he didn't succeed in saving his father, but probably you mean now, because Claudia's saying that you need to fight against your older self. We'll go with that. Do you think he'll succeed in that mission? I think I think he will, but I, I think that you've really nailed the crux of the issue there. Like, Jonas, Jonas's mission has changed about 70 times since this series started, <laughs> like, because the goalposts just keep moving as he, as the camera pulls back to reveal how big this problem is. Um, so I think it would be naive of me to say, I think the mission that he's on now is going to remain his mission for the rest of the series, just because it's changed so many times. But I think ultimately he will fix things. Like the, it will go back to Vinden existing as it did, as if the the timeline had, or the time loop had never been caused. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like there's going to, there's a lot of, there's a lot of road to travel before we even get close to that. Awesome. I think this is just a nice time to also just reflect upon your what your hope, what your thoughts about what season two would be about was. You thought that we would be in the the, the future for the vast yeah. majority of the time. Yeah, I figured like that was the most underdeveloped timeline. Had we we hadn't seen the twenties at all in season one, did no. we? No, 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 no. Yeah, so so I, I figured of the of the the three um in the 33 year cycle and plus the future the future was the the one that was most under under visited so that would be where we spend most of our time and for the first few episodes i guess you could probably make the argument that that was just about true 
yeah. but s- since then it's gone off a cliff there's just yeah, no future <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. but it's, i'll, I'll be interested look. to see if there is more in in the in the end of the season actually oh look is right no future uh okay. yeah yeah so uh question for both of you this comes from santino <coughs> so excuse me santino says have you thought of the fact that in 33 years we will see the actors age and we will be able to compare in real life uh, their real their real life aging to the show's casting. <laughs> That'd be good. That, yeah, that will be very fun. Um, I I feel like looking forward to viewing the ravages of age as a man who is in his thirties <laughs> is a bit is a is a bit too real for me, quite frankly. <laughs> can quite you frankly. can you can you imagine when you're sixty five? Yeah, imagine how <laughs> fucking awful you'll look. <laughs> so like, 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 thanks, guys. Yeah, no, it, it will be cool though. Um, I, I wonder, I wonder who will look most like, um, their older self in this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, yes. Even though the the the, the <laughs> yeah, Yasin, yeah, the war will have come and the world will have ended, so no, YouTube won't exist anymore. But on the off chance that you know our new insect overlords find this video in a data crystal or whatever we're using there um i think yeah that yasin's gonna be the one who most looks like alexander when he gets older <laughs> yeah i think it's gonna be a dead on 100 yeah. percent dead on can't believe that casting and i can't believe everyone's trying to guide me away from that theory as well <laughs> it will never die it hasn't been confirmed one way or the other yeah, I mean, you know, we I haven't seen Yasin's body. I've seen a body, which maybe was Yasin's. But even but... at that, it doesn't matter if you saw Yasin's body, because you saw Helga's body too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a fair point. Yeah, Helga died. There's two of them. There might as well be. There's two of everyone. Yeah, also, Santino adds, also, what do you think about Stranger Jonas being 51 years old in, the, in real life? Is he, he 51? Looks, he looks like he looks uh, 35. Yeah, Um. he, well, well, that's how old... I don't know about actually. Maybe the actor. I know the actor's definitely in his forties at least. Yeah, a- I put him in his forties. The actual character though would, would be fifty-one or fifty at least. I mean, he's a yeah, he's a he's a very healthy fifty-one. Um, uh, in terms of how he looks. Um, I don't think. Yeah, he, like, yeah, I don't think he looks thirty-five. I think he definitely. Looks no, 40, he looks older 40. than his thirties. He looks, I remember, this is a complete aside, but I remember when I was like 14, I used to go into like role-playing chat rooms um, to play like Dungeons and Dragons online. And um, I made a character when, I, yeah, so I was like 14 at this point and I made a character and I wanted them to be like a haggard old man. Uh, so I made their age 31. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I look at that now as a 33-year-old and I'm like, God damn it. That's <laughs> like, I was so far away. Yeah, and the fact that you're first you're watching Dark for the first time at the age of thirty three, yeah, come on, that's that's not lost on anyone. No, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, there, there you go. It, it can't just be coincidence. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm in my first cycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you just reminded me. I'm not a huge Friends fan, but you just reminded me of Friends. You know, like oh no, no, sorry, no, it's not even Friends. What am I talking about? It's it's always Sunny. You know, uh, into the second <laughs> act. We're in our second act, D. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> You're already into your second act, and and your first act was awful, and your second one's not going to be any better. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know why my mind went to Friends there. I, obviously, like in my mind, uh, it's always Sunny, Seinfeld, and Friends are all sort of in the same ballpark because they're they're very different shows, but they're all about groups of friends uh, who live in live in a city. Seinfeld and It's Always Sunny, just for uh, anyone listening, It's Always Sunny is what Seinfeld would have been if it was made now because it's just about yeah. four friends who are absolute dickheads uh, yeah they're, they're awful to each other and <laughs> i love it very much yeah it's great okay uh question for from master onion north uh says uh yeah can conrad explain why no one else with the exception of michael uh noticed that Jonas suddenly has longer hair <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I guess they just don't pay attention to be honest i mean like auric and katarina they they were like annoyed by the fact that that um their son had a potentially life-threatening disease so i don't think they're paying that much attention to like what other people's children look like to be honest they barely pay attention to their own um i'm trying to think who else martyr. Actually... oh martyr did yeah, yeah martyr's the big one she... yeah uh, let me just say if in 30 years time or whatever the nephew and the and the nephew and the auntie are hanging about like living together as like a middle-aged couple <laughs> yeah. and like Marta comes in from the hairdresser you know with the new hairdo and she gets annoyed that Jonas didn't notice 
Jonas has got it on her. You know, yeah, he's, she, got, he's she, got one in the bank. She can't say a thing because she didn't yeah. notice his. You know. Yeah, that is that. It, like, it is odd that that she didn't notice his hair, like, given she was. I mean, like, uh, Michael hadn't seen Jonas in a few hours, and uh, you know, she had literally seen the other Jonas about thirty seconds before, <laughs> like, yeah. the 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 older one turned up. So she probably should have noticed. She should have, but she didn't. Dark cancelled. Right. Okay. So Pep <laughs> Pep Cool says question for Conrad. This is the first time that Jonas met Claudia, I believe. Do you think Claudia has met Jonas before? Uh, for example, 50s or 80s or old Claudia, having met an older version of Jonas, perhaps even Adam? Uh, well, I mean, she says um, she's been looking forward to meeting him again. Um, and in fact, it's a great line because, uh, yeah, she, she's like, oh, I've been looking forward to meeting you again. And he says, I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's uh, it very heavily implies that she's met a different version of Jonas um, and... Um, and will you know that uh, well it has potentially influenced him at different points in his uh, in his timeline so i'm interested to see what she's actually done so i mean i suppose her stuff with stranger it's not really been revealed what she's actually done with the stranger up until this point it's kind of vaguely hinted at but um mm-hmm. i wonder if we're going to get more of that but you know she's she's definitely seen other versions of Jonas up until this point yeah definitely uh, because that line would directly imply that, I think. Uh, mm. So, um, Blau, or yeah, Blau K asks, Conrad, in the last episode, you said the show tends to operate in mirrors. Can you expand on that thought? What predictions can you make for the mirror theme in future episodes? Um, well, I think it's, it's quite, it, it's normally in sort of character behaviors and, and sort of thematically, in, in in each episode but i think the the mirror between Jonas and his and his older self is is an obvious one um i think the 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 mirror between claudia and and adam is also is also quite apparent um in terms of the themes i don't know it's hard to predict something like that because the show could go in so many different directions but i, I think the, this idea of cycles keeps coming back and the more i hear about it the more i think that that there are people who kind of exist outside of time who are watching these these cycles complete and and are able to sort of see the differences in them and those if if they are just kind of loops of this uh, or repetitions of the same time loop would by definition be kind of mirrors of each other so that would be uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see if that actually bears out um but yeah it, it's mainly just kind of comparisons of characters within scenes and episodes that i that i enjoy okay cool um, okay, so Master on your north uh, adds in here uh, to Jamie Jet, who asked how many times you climaxed. Uh, <laughs> J- Jamie Jet asks uh, the more important question to Conrad is: Did he cry during the episode? And there's no, there was something in my eyes, eyes answered aloud here. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm a bit weird with crying during things. Like certain things really get me, and certain things I just feel completely dead inside for. Um, mm. so this, uh, but I can still, you know, objectively look at something and be like, that's really sad. So dark has not made me cry yet. Um, the Egon and Claudia stuff, uh, from the episode before last was really sad. Uh, the Jonas and Michael stuff in this episode was really sad too, and and you know, definitely I had an emotional response to it. Um, but um, the things that tend to make me cry are um, the ending of Toy Story 3 yeah. <laughs> and uh, Band of Brothers tends to tends to get me for some reason. Um, and there was a very good movie um, that came out recently, or I say recently, it was like two years ago, called uh, Ghost Story that made me absolutely bore my eyes out. But nothing in dark has got me yet. Interesting. Uh, m- well, I wasn't asked, but uh, specific- I, I will <laughs> once spe- again, you're just chipping in when you're not invited. <laughs> I'll specifically answer this one, but um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, I am a really big crier at films uh, and TV. I get heavily emotionally involved in them. Um, having said that, it's not uh, it's it's my problem. Uh, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 not a problem. I'll explain what I mean in a minute. But for example, like the last film I cried at was like three days ago when I watched. Um, uh, draft draft day, the Kevin Costa <laughs> film. Uh, whenever it's about an NFL draft, and just the the what do you call him? Uh, Chadwick Boseman's character got drafted, and uh, he was such like a sort of uh, underdog, and he did, did anyway. It got me right. 
And then I also la- uh, cried at Dennis Quaid in the film The Rookie about an old man who becomes a baseball pitcher. That made me cry. I, say, uh, but I mean, like, stories of sporting success are, like, ready-made to make yeah, you cry. Yeah, yeah. It's like, remember the Titans. Yeah, I cr- well, to be honest with you, I cried a lot of stuff. And the reason why I'm saying it's my problem, and the reason this is why I'm saying it's 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 not a problem to cry at things, definitely not. And I'm not a man who would who would uh, hold my feelings in at all. Um, you probably knew that already at this point. I rant a lot, but at the same time, um, I know that it is so- somewhat of a human I- human problem because you know what also ma- makes me cry, even though it's gen- even though it's engineered to do so. If I sit down and fully pay attention to like a show like. Uh, America's Got Talent, for example. Yeah, and I fully pay attention to it, and I watch the auditions. And there's like, there's like a, there's like a young kid, like there's a young kid in one of the seasons of America's Got Talent who loves musicals, and he's just, he's there's not even a sob story for it. He just loves musicals, and he's amazing at singing, and he's just he starts crying, and I start crying. That's how I know it's a bit of a problem because. But those, those so- things are like scientifically engineered to get yes. you though. Like they, I, they have like crack teams of scientists working yeah. on that that's stuff. A, that's that's why that's why it's funny because I know it's coming and it still gets me. You know, I know I know that it's engineered to get me and it does. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I do. I cry at some stuff, but it does. It takes. I, I cry at weird things like that kind of stuff doesn't get me at all for the most part. But then I'll be watching like an advert. And it'll have like a sick dog in it or something, and I'll just be like, oh, "God bless him," and like, <laughs> I'll go. God bless his cotton socks, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Next question comes from Brent, the middleman, and Brent says, "Do you think the uh, the Saint Christopher necklace has any significance beyond being sentimental because they found it at a lake?" Um, I, I forgot to mention this actually, but Marta just knowing that it's the patron saint of travelers, I'm not sure. That made me raise raise an eyebrow when she said that. Just like, well, oh you, yeah, you know that. They explained that how she knew that by her saying to Eunice, "Don't ask." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but it's just you know, oh that thing that all sixteen year old girls know about. You know, patron saints of obscure things. Um, well, so this is a girl who's obsessed with Ariadne, so she might be also into rel- religious mythos. That yeah, that is true. I guess. I mean, I, I don't. It's one of those things where I'm just like, well, I'm gonna keep an eye on that. <laughs> but without you know, without you know may, maybe leaning too heavily on it um i don't know if it's going to be it, it's it's it seems like quite intimate um symbolism really uh, or symbology i guess it, you know it's something that that is shared very very explicitly between the various different forms of jonas and Marta. so i i don't know if it's going to be more significant than just a kind of visual representation or or a, a, a physical representation of the bond that they share. I, I, I think I suspect it's just going to be that. Um, but I'll, I'll be interested to see how it changes hands. Cause as, as we exist in the present, I think Marta has it because the stranger has given it to her. Mm. Um, which, which means that Jonas held onto it from where he, where he's given it at the, on the, um, on the at the lake all the way through to when he is the stranger then he gives it back to marta and then gets it back at some point presumably when marta dies so there's there's going to be some significant emotional weight attached to that i think cool uh brent also adds this is hilarious uh (laughs) good thing they found it as in the the metal a good thing they found it before tronto came with his high socks fishing hat and metal detector I feel like Tronta definitely is one of those types. Who yeah, goes that, like that, mouth that's why it, at the beach. That's why it made me laugh because it's just yeah. such such a great summation you've of his na- you've character. You've absolutely, absolutely nailed Tronta there. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's a, it's like oh, I've got, found a couple of marks on the beach. I'll uh, pop those in the pocket, and that'll yeah. pay for pay for the ice cream or the newspaper he's going to buy on the way home. Yeah, it's great. Um, okay, so uh, next, uh, Conrad. I'm sorry, but you get a bit of a. You, you, the egg's all on your face here. You've got oh, egg Jesus. all over your face. Oh, Jean Christ. Kim has come in and pointed out, and this is, you know what, we might have to stop recording here, guys, because <laughs> he's going to be too embarrassed about this. Oh, no, I'm getting, I'm getting dunked on. Yeah, you're getting dunked on. Ulrich looks pretty good for having aged 66 years, eh? Oh, cr- yeah, I knew I'd... I, I listened back to the episode <laughs> just to check it, and I said, I said it twice, and I knew there was going to be someone who would comment. I knew, I knew you were coming, all right, and I prepared, I prepared for you. <laughs> Right, I haven't actually prepared anything. I've got no excuse. It was just, um, I mean, he might. We don't know what happened to him in those thirty-three years. Maybe he went back again. 
So yeah. that's a... <laughs> and he's a hundred years old now. Yeah, and he's yeah, he's like a hundred. We don't know, all right? Yeah, and there's no, there's nothing you can say that can convince us otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, if my theory matrix is proof of anything, it's that I will ride ridiculous theories, such as Regina will have a sword fight into the ground. So yeah, <laughs> don't you come in here with your facts? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Step okay. Step to me. Thanks, Gene. Uh, <laughs> keep him coming. He needs he needs a talking to. He needs he needs yeah. taken off his pedestal. To be honest with you. Yeah, I need to get t- taken down a peg or two. Yeah. Okay. Adahan says, uh, sometimes I wonder perhaps years from now, Conrad will turn around and look at Dark and think, what a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> However, no matter what happens, he cannot deny that it is still a great episode of television. Right. Okay. So thanks, Adahan. Uh, questions now. <laughs> no, that wasn't all Adahan had to say. There's questions for him too. Oh, okay. uh, for Conrad. Um, oh, and Ad- Adahan did confirm that he is male. Uh, because okay, we, we we said that we weren't uh, sure of the name, and I apologize if we were misgendering him, but we were not, so that's good. So for Conrad, Claudia comes to get Jonas at exactly the right time. A wizard is never late. <laughs> Nor is he early. <laughs> she, oh, he, that, yeah, that's a great comparison. He arrives precisely when he means to. Uh, how long do you think she'll spend with him? Will she teach him anything, or will it just be that she th- takes him, drops him off in the eighties, and then goes, uh, "Yep, see you. I need to get. I need to go get shot." <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm late for a very important date with a shotgun. Yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, there's. I don't actually know what I think is going to happen with this because it could really go either way, and I'd just be guessing. But I, I think, I hope that she takes Jonas under her wing. Um, because he needs it. Like he needs someone. He he doesn't have anyone telling him how to do anything. He's just being manipulated by a series of people. And to be honest, I think Claudia is probably going to manipulate him a bit as well. Although I think she is doing it for more um, philanthropic reasons than Adam. Um, so which is why I trust her more. Um, but like, yeah, I hope I hope she stays with him for a while. I hope she teaches him, you know, how to use the ring of power. Or uh, responsibly, and you know, uh, gives him a sword that tells him when orcs are near. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, okay, <laughs> so uh, this episode is one of the only episodes where you see Katarina caring for Mickle before he disappeared. Why do you think the creators chose to do this? Stylistical, a uh, stylistic, thematic. What do you think? Um, I think I think it's it's just um, it's a, it's a good opportunity to put a bit of shine on Katarina and Ulrich and Hannah. And Michael's characters, to be honest, that they, they haven't had a lot. Katarina has looked pretty much completely awful uh, for the last season and a half, and you know, not without reason. Obviously, her son and her husband have gone missing, but she hasn't really had any of the good sides of her character shown. In the eighties, she looks like a bully, um, and in in present day, she kind of looks like a bully too, to be honest. So. Mm. It's really nice, and, and you, you highlighted it in the main episode, to just see her and Ulrich kind of be a loving couple. Um, and, you know, for her to kind of be the life of the party and for them to be having fun together. Um, it's 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 just an, yet another example, I think, of uh, Dark being a show that, that is committed to exploring its characters and not just pigeonholing them into, oh, Katarina is the bully woman, and that's all she's ever going to be. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, uh, so next question from Adahan for you says, did you notice that Bartos, Regina, and I appreciate this, and Alexander slash Yassin Thank you very w- much. weren't invited to the party? What do you think this might be? I think we did. We talked about that in the, in the main episode, but uh, any short answer there? Well, I think I think Bartos was invited. Oh, well, that I mean, that seemed like the implication from him telling her, uh, telling Marta that, that he couldn't come. Yeah, but, I, think, uh, yeah. I think Bartos must have been invited. You're right. But but yeah, like Yasin um, and <laughs> and um, and Regina definitely weren't uh, definitely weren't invited. And um, yeah, I mean they the the there's a there are a few there's a feud between the Tiedemans and the Nielsens, which the more I think about it, the more I think that that's quite emblematic of the central conflict in the show. To be to be honest, what with yeah. the Sigmund disguise being Nielsen Incorporated and it just being Claudia on the other side. Okay, awesome. Uh, AK adds in here saying that uh, the Tiedemans were actually celebrating Regina and her hotel that day. I, I think that was an excuse to to not let Bartos go around to the people who bullied her uh, oh, when she was. Were they child. celebrating it opening? Just the three of them. They might have been. No, but, but but yeah, but well, like, did they say is that so, is that supposed to be what they were celebrating though? But even if they were lying about it, that the hotel had opened. Yeah, apparently. 
I don't know if it was that it was open or just that they were celebrating something about it. Like, yeah. is, is it weird? If, if it is open, that means it only stayed open for a year before it closed. Oh, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, like if it's already if it's already doing badly in November. So like it it basically it was doing well for about four months, and then Eric Obendorf. Oh, actually, speaking of which. Jürgen Obendorf, nowhere to be seen. Uh, Katarina and Ulrich's <laughs> party. What's going on there? And and Voller wasn't there either. Well, you know, they don't have to be friends with everyone. Well, yeah, but, but he works with Voller. That's not how TV works. Yeah, you're meant to be friends with the whole cast. Yeah, they need. I need to see all the. I, I, I occasionally you need a Phoebe and Chandler storyline. All right, they don't do a lot together, but sometimes <laughs> you want to see them interact. Um, yeah, that, I, I can't remember why I got onto that, but yeah. Um, Regina's Hotel does poorly very, very early on by the sounds of things. So they clearly celebrated too soon. Yeah. Uh, okay, last question from Manahan is for me. You mentioned it quite a few times that this is one of your one of your favorite episodes. So for a bit of an abstract question, what makes it one of the, your favorite episodes? What aspects do you especially love? Well, I mentioned in the main episode a little bit about this, but I will go it again. So I really like... Uh, I Obviously, I, lo- I love the character development in this episode. The stuff between Jonas and Marta puts certain pieces in place that we needed from season one and it makes that what happened in season one so much more uh sort of deep and uh, dramatic i like i like this episode in its entirety because i think it does that overall i think this episode is one of the episodes which gives the most thematic depth to things from the past but also in the things for the future to come as well at the end when you've seen all three seasons i would be surprised if conrad didn't look back on this episode and think whoa, this episode was kind of like the setup episode, you know? This this episode was a setup for what came before it and also what came after it too. That's all yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's... I can definitely see how that's going to that's gonna pan out. And, and and you are right in what you said previously that, that um, this stands out, like, kind of structurally and content-wise as a very different episode to most of, most of what has gone before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I said, I think I said in the main episode, it's like this is episode zero, you know? It's like it's like yeah. episode zero of the show. Um, okay, so thanks very much, Adahan. Next question from Bill Ross. On a gullibility scale from one to ten, <laughs> where does Jonas rate? Well, I, I maybe foolishly said that uh, after Adam's three lives monologue in the previous episode, that I thought Jonas had lost all of his naivete but he still he seems to still be able to find ways to be naive to the, the how this is working just when i think he's he's turned a corner so i i'd be foolish to say i think he's at full on 10 naivety i i think he's i i think he's maybe a 7 now i still think there's there's things to be revealed that he'll he won't understand at all um mm-hmm. in his future okay uh cool i'm not going to answer that uh so <laughs> Annie Marl says, for Conrad, points to you for your Jonas and Marta sex theory. Thank you very much. How do you feel about their love story after watching this episode? Does it feel real or does it feel like just one big bootstrap paradox? Um, no, I mean, it does. It feels real because of the way it's performed by Lewis Hoffman. And um, I looked up her name as well, actually, and I can't remember it now. The, the actress who plays Marta. Lisa Vicari. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, their performances are great and I think that's what really lends the relationship a lot of its kind of emotional credibility um, it obviously it is underpinned by a tremendous amount of discomfort because it's a, a nephew and aunt having sex with each other um, but the fact that they are able to capture a certain amount of romance even in a relationship like that is is testimony to the performances and the writing I think yeah I would agree with you. Uh, the next question is for both of us uh, from Animal. It says, what do you think of the performance of the actor who plays Michael? Now, I've just looked it up. The actor's name is Sebastian Rudolph. Um, okay. I think that the actor who played Sebastian Rudolph had a really hard job. And the reason why I say that is because this show is full of amazing actors who have got, at this point, become so used, uh, so like sort of familiar to the audience that we're just used to every part of the way they act and their sort of their emotions, their, their emotional scale, so to speak. Uh, and to be an actor who has been a present figure the whole time, but this is the first time we've actually ever seen him acting. Um, and I thought he knocked it out of the park. I thought he 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 matched the performances of any every any other actor in the show. That's what I felt. Yeah, I mean, it might 
I'm trying to think back. This this is probably the first time we've really heard him speak for any extended it, period of time, except for when he read the letter at the end of episode yeah, five. Yeah, I guess reading the letter. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. So I, I I agree. I think he was fantastic. I think he had a lot of catching up to do, and and the the amount of um the amount of pathos he managed to put in his performance, and the amount of believability and just character he managed to bring into his performance with so little uh prep was fantastic yeah i agree okay last question um <coughs> from artifacts entertainment oh okay that's about, a good name it's about vola's eye okay nice finally what, what are the chances he has or i suppose it's to say had heterochromia and that he is related to claudia <laughs> i that's i'd love that to be true that's what so uh, is 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 what was this commenter's name sorry uh, i said Ar- i liked it Ar- artifacts it. entertainment artifacts entertainment so is the implication there from artifacts entertainment that Voller was so ashamed of of <laughs> his relationship with claudia that that he plucked out his own eye um as if in defiance of the the hero's burden that has been placed on him by being an illegitimate son of claudia <laughs> Well, I think that's what we're all thinking. Yeah, I mean, Vola, <laughs> Vola's obviously going to become the hero in season three. I think that goes without saying. Um, and like yeah. most heroes, as as you well know, um, you know, being familiar with the hero's journey, they yeah. will initially reject the call, and that that's what, <laughs> yeah. and that is what Vola has done by plucking out his blue eye. He said, "No, I can't accept this power." Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, we. <laughs> We haven't really talked about that yet because I think that's just very clear where they're going yeah. with this. Only um, only an idiot wouldn't pick that up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just will say I did a, uh, an episode of uh, Dark Discussions this week talking all about Claudia and I mentioned about her heter- heterochromia um, and I was bombarded with people in the comments telling me that uh, David Bowie has heterochromia. Uh, now, yeah. just, just to say... Um, I'm going to dispel this myth here because I know not everyone who listens to the podcast also listens, not everyone listens to Dark Discussions. I'll just say uh, David Bowie doesn't have heterochromia. I, he, was the, he was the first person I looked up to find out more people with it. Like Dan Aykroyd has it. Mental, oh, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, so does the Witcher guy, whatever his name is, can't remember. Anyway. What, um, um, Henry Cavill? Yeah, he's, but his, his is partial. He's got like a small bit of brown in one eye. It still counts oh, if okay. it's partial. David Bowie is the first one I thought of, so I looked him up. He doesn't have it. He's actually got a different thing where he actually took a knock to the eye when he was young, and because of that, one of his pupils isn't able to dilate and stuff, so one of his pupils is always in the fully open position. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So it makes one eye look darker than the other. I think he also, on certain album covers, would recolor that eye to sort of emphasize the difference but in real life both 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 irises were the same color that's very interesting i i because yeah I, I was like like you and and the commenters like the when i think of heterochromia the first person i think of is uh is old is old bowie yeah so um i could be completely wrong about that but what i what the, the articles that i found about it said that he didn't and it's it is the, and you see the picture now you you can't mistake the two different sized pupils so yeah there we go. Um, just thought I'd mention that because uh, I was interested to find that out, and I'm sure some people did still think that Bowie had heterochromia, and now you know that he doesn't. Uh, until someone educational. Sh- edu- that's that's what we're here for. You know, we've waited till now to reveal our true purpose, but it is to educate you guys. Uh, all right. So make sure you leave comments on the next uh, episode on Monday for, and that will be episode eight of the season finale that's the one that's the, that is the next one you're going to be able to leave questions about coming out this monday so make sure you leave questions about that if you want to leave questions on the youtube video you can anyone who's listening on audio apps you can leave us questions at the email address adpodmail at gmail.com adpodmail at gmail.com i'll try and remember to put that in the description of the podcast um apart from that make sure you subscribe to this channel subscribe to audio apps if you haven't already We've had a lot of questions. This is over an hour long, this episode, Conrad. So um, what should we do? So, should we sing a song to, to, to round it out to a full hour ten? I don't know. Uh, yeah, just, you know, a whole new world. Okay, I'll be, I'll, I'll be Jasmine. 
<laughs> I don't remember. The only bit I remember that song up. is, um, ironically and very enthusiastically going, don't you dare close your eyes. Like, and but doing it in that kind of like musical theater, spoken word, singing recitative style. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see you next week. Uh, <laughs> Where did that go? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah. If you want to hear us sing A Whole New World with Conrad as Aladdin and me as Yasmin, let us know. Uh, that'll can be, that can be put on the channel. But apart from that, yeah. see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the After Dark Podcast. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode.